Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so Merry Almost Christmas, everyone. This is going to be posted on Christmas Eve. Uh, and we're going to do a very festive, fun Christmas stockings uh, photo of three stockings hanging next to our hearth in our lovely little festive home. And we have our four standard brushes for today's class. Use these in most of my classes. So I have the large square brush, medium sized brush right here, and then two smaller detail brushes. These three came in a kit that used to have a smaller one with it too, but unfortunately I left that one in that water cup and it got a little bit bent, so I'm using this sub today. But you can check out a link in the description box below to these brushes, as well as all the materials that you need to paint along. The background colors that we're going to start with for the first part of today's class, we just have black and white, as well as some burnt sienna type brown, some cadmium yellow, and some ultramarine blue. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to get our bearings here uh, by creating a line here that's going to be sort of like the horizon line. Uh, for this painting. It's going to be the top part of our fireplace of our hearth here. And I'm going to start with some light blue and I have my second to smallest detail brush here. Light blue. This is going to be the color that I'm going to have my wall and I'm going to just chop off the top part here a little bit like the top maybe inch and a half or two inches less than a quarter of the canvas just a little bit up top there and then i'm going to rinse my brush and switch to gray just black and white together of course and then so i'm gonna have my ceiling or my uh wall back here come meet the top part of the fireplace of the hearth. There's going to be a little strip of wood here and then we're going to have our actual fireplace like stones and so I'm going to come another couple inches down here and create a gray line that goes straight across as well and then I'm going to have a rectangle on the inside of that section about like so and we're gonna try to make this as straight as possible later but also right now this is sort of like our little starter sketch all right so now we have a couple different sections let's grab go ahead and grab our largest brush now for some filling in, I'm going to take that light blue, pretty much the same color that I used to create this sketch line. And then now I'm just going to work from the top down on this first layer of colors. All the way across and this is where we're going to want to try to do as straight of lines as we can. All the way across the top. A little bit of water always helps the paint go nice and smooth. And just making sure that the paint has soaked into that canvas texture. And we don't have any white canvas showing. Okay, this first layer, everything is getting filled in, all those base shapes. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Nice little strip of blue there. Easy peasy. I'm going to grab now my medium sized brush since we have a slightly smaller section here. And that top part is going to actually be our wooden top here of the fireplace. So I'm going to mix up a beige. 
So it's gonna be my warm brown mixed with a little bit of yellow and some white. You can even pull a tiny pinch of black in and you should get a nice neutral brown color. And I'm just going to take that right into the next section down. And we're gonna bring that color in there, bring it all the way down to cover the sketch line on the bottom. Apologies if you can hear my big old heater because it's a cozy wintry day here. And it is really, really loud. <laughs> But I'm grateful to be warm and cozy. Let me know in the comments section if it's freezing cold where you are right now. I know a lot of the country is blanketed under snow. Tis the season. No snow for me, but I think it's about 40 outside midday, which is not so bad. 40 degrees Fahrenheit, that is. Nice, clean line of separation there where the brown meets the blue. Clean into the color above it. Working from the top down so we don't pull our colors into each other. And I can see that this is a little bit fatter on one side. So I'm gonna adjust that slightly. Pulling my arm just across as even as I can. We could have used a ruler, I suppose. <laughs> sometimes I feel like using a ruler, sometimes I don't. All right, so this outside shape here, we're going to do with a very light gray. So this is sort of like the mortar in between the bricks, yeah? And Nice light gray color. Same brush. A little bit of brown in there still. Make sure I don't put too much of that in there. So I'm going for a gray stone fireplace today. Okay, and we want to pull that up right to the brown but I don't want to pull it into the brown, so I'm probably just going to get like pretty close right now and then work a little bit on the other areas. I'll come up there in just a minute and make sure I have a nice clean line. But for now, I know that this light gray can be covered by the black that we're going to use in the middle but it's gonna pull through the brown. So let's just let that dry for a second. And I've got my brush strokes now up and down, but these top ones, I wanna have them still be back and forth. Okay. And just like one solid color right now just blocking out these first shapes. All right, bringing that to the outside edge and getting it all filled in. That brown already looks slightly dry, but I'll go ahead and fill in my fireplace. I think instead of using black, I'm gonna use a dark, dark, dark gray. So just a little bit of white there. And I'm just getting the color all in there and just kind of solid for this first layer. Okay, and I want to create as square of a fireplace opening as possible. And just as a reminder, I try to keep the canvas in one place so that it's not moving all around for you guys and you can see it come together. 
but when I'm actually painting on my own, I tend to move the canvas around a lot and put my face really close to it. So feel free to do that. Look at your canvas in different ways. You can even take it and look at it in the mirror to make sure that all of your sections are equal. Or you can just kind of go with the flow too because we're beginners here and we're not going for photorealism. And so we don't mind a little bit of wonky whimsy. But if you wanna get technical, feel free to move it around. All right, almost finished with our first layer here. Looks pretty straight here on the top part. I feel like this is a little still wonky. Slight adjustment as needed. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. I'm gonna rinse my brush really quick and just go back up to that little area with the light gray that we were letting dry. And I'm going to try to finesse as straight of a line as I can Oop, into the brown topper there. On our mantle. And once I get this all filled in, we are going to step away and let this layer dry. And then we'll come back and add a whole lot more. Okay, so I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background and I got some fresh colors and a new piece of palette paper here. So again, I have black and white and then I also have some cadmium red, some phthalo green and some cadmium yellow. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. So let's go ahead and grab our medium sized brush and we're gonna work a little bit here in our little stone work first. And what I'm gonna be doing here is just using shades of gray. And I'm gonna start with a fairly dark gray. And I'm just gonna create a little rectangle here with that dark gray. And it doesn't have to be neat. And then I'm going to pick either a lighter color gray or a darker color gray right next door. So we're gonna be like alternating shades of gray. And then we're going to layer them on top of each other in a way that is overlapping right where the two come together. Okay, so this is like centered here. And different colors of gray and just quickly building our little stones here. And you can also have a little bit of color variation within the stones. Looks nice. Okay, but some are gonna be a little bit darker and we're gonna have all kinds of different colors. And we're just going to build our little hearth, our little fireplace. Just like so from the ground up. And since it's all gray, it's pretty simple to play with the colors here. And it doesn't need to be too neat since it's kind of like a rustic style, right? Okay. Rustic style fireplace. Not every stone is perfect. A little bit of color variation, kind of coming back in here with a darker color and go around the outside edge. Looks nice because the stone would be raised up a little bit. Okay, we're just going to work all our way to the top here. 
However it ends up, they would cut the stones to the shape. Just like so. Feel free to use a smaller brush if you would prefer. I kind of like using the larger one because I feel like it kind of deliberately makes things a little bit messier, which I like. Okay, that's looking good. And then once we've worked our way all the way up here, I'm going to start working my way over as well. The whole little fireplace is going to all have stones on it. And just kind of laying them as you go. Trying to keep things sort of deliberately messy. It's looking good to me. You can always come back and Add a little shadow here or a little highlight there if you want to. It's kind of fun. No hurries. Take your time. Okay, that's looking good. Working my way over here. Okay, pull them all the way over to the other side. Just going to continue this row all the way over. Nice. Then we'd have the little ones in between here, little, little habsies. Underneath. Just like so. Looking good. Filling these guys in with gray as well. All the same idea. Just having patience and working my way over. Okay. Adjust that one slightly. It's easy to work with these gray tones. This painting reminds me of a bridge painting that I did. Autumn Bridge. And we do the same kind of stonework. <laughs> All right, that's looking good. A little bit more under here. I think I need a little bit more shadow work. Up here, I can kind of use it to refine the shape as well. Adjust the shape so that they are somewhat even, but not too even. All right, that's looking good. Almost done. And I'm just being patient here and working from the pattern that I started with. And I'm all the way on the other side. And I want to have about the same amount of rows, but it's okay. I don't think anyone's going to be counting our stones. Just like so. Okay. And our whole shape there. We just gotta fill them in. And we have that beautiful textured fireplace now. I think it's a time-consuming part of the painting, but 
makes it really interesting as far as textures and everything. Not all that solid, boring, one color background of gray. Okay, I'm looking very good here. A couple dark stones. bit of highlights here and there as well. And just kind of trying to balance the same amount of highlights on, and blue lights on either side. I'm just working with black and white. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush and with a black. I'm just going to do a quick darkening of the outside edge of my fireplace just to refine that shape nicely. Perfect. Near one right along the top. Straight as I can. And right down the side here, nice clean shape. And I have a little bit of sort of scruffy canvas texture under there from before. So just touching that up and making that sure that all looks nice and clean and as straight as we can. All right. Let's go ahead now and move on to the top part a little bit and then we'll do our stockings. All right, that same second to smallest detail brush, going to grab a little bit of black into this little wooden area as well. And I'm gonna go across the bottom part, creating a nice clean line of separation those two sections, and then a little bit of water. Water it down until it's kind of like an inky consistency. That makes it go a little bit smoother. I'm gonna go across the top too with a little bit of a shadow. Trying to keep it an even thickness as best as I can. And then a little bit more water even. Nice and smooth paint. I'm gonna do some lines here in the wood. And some of them are gonna be slightly curved, just like so, and that's gonna give you that wood grain look. Okay, so you see the little curve there? some more just straight lines here and there as well. Make a little bit of that wood grain texture. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, very nice. All right, we're going to start blocking out where our stockings are gonna go. I'm gonna start this with green, and this is gonna be like knobs or just some little thing that we've fastened to our mantle in order to hang our stockings from. And I'm just going to load up a yellowy green, so I'm mixing some green and yellow together there. And a little bit more yellow, and then also a little bit of white in there. And I'm going to kind of center myself here in my mantle, and I'm going to do a green dot right in the center. And then I'll go off to the side here, almost all the way to the edge, but not quite. I want to give myself a fair amount of room, but we do want to get that stockings in front of the fire look, of course. All right, just like so, three little green dots, very simple. 
going to try to even them out a little bit. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna add a little quick highlight on those guys with a lighter color. I'm going to just do that same color, only with a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna do a quick little highlight line on each of those green dots. It'll show up a little bit easier now. All right, and we're going to now sketch out our stocking shape. And what I'm going to do is grab my smallest brush, and I'm actually going to be sketching this out with white first. And I'm going to start in the center stocking, and I'm going to start with a little line that comes down into sort of like the stone area a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to do an oval on an angle. That's going to be the top part. Then we'll have a little kind of straight, slightly curved line here for the top part of the sock. And then we're going to come down from the center here, just like so. And we're going to go around and back up to meet that shape. There we have our first stocking shape. Okay. And then we're going to repeat those same steps right next door. And it's okay if you kind of adjust things. That's why we're starting with this white, sort of like using a pencil. And then we're using paint. All right, and then we can kind of adjust the top part there. It's okay if you sort of lose the shape at this moment, because as we fill them in with colors, we'll be able to finesse things. And your stockings can be slightly different if you'd like, or they can be the same. You can really have as many as you'd like. Okay, and then we'll do one more over here. three stockings today. Maybe this one is a little bit smaller, slightly different, or the same, whatever you like. I think I'll make it the same as the others. Start small so you can always adjust it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's looking good. I kind of want this black to get pushed out a little bit farther since I'm going a little bit right here with the stockings. So luckily we can adjust this if we need to. Just grab my medium brush again. And depending on your composition, you may or may not need to make it bigger. There we go, much better. All right, and I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush again and we're going to start filling these guys in. Okay, so I'm going to start with actually the base colors here. And same second to smallest brush here. I think I'm going to take just a tiny pinch of black into this red just to tone it down slightly. And this first stocking here on the right, or left rather, <laughs> Okay, with my left and right. I'm gonna go all the way around the top part here. And then I'm gonna take a slightly darker version of that red for the inside. And then I'll have that normal red here on the outside. So it'll look just like so. And take a little bit more of a bright red in there and I'm not getting very good coverage with this red so I may need to come back and hit it with a second layer which is fine 
if you need to do that. Okay, and I'm also going to take some red here into the toe of my stocking. Give them pretty cute and the heel. Okay, filling that in with the red color. Just getting that first layer on. We can always come back and add a bit more. And I'm gonna do my dark green with just a little bit of yellow of white. I'm not gonna not use yellow for this first one. So we'll have a dark forest Christmassy green. I'm going to cover my sketch lines and bring it right to the red. Straight as I can, covering my sketch lines. Getting that first layer of color on there. little bit more green down here. All right. Nice and clean as possible. Okay. Very cute. I'm gonna do the base colors now on my second one, moving right along. Gonna Take a lighter green this time, mixing it up, doing a different color green. Kind of whatever color you like. And this is gonna be pretty much the same idea as the first one, but different colors. Where I'm gonna have that green heel and toe, cute. Slightly darker green. Gonna add black and some dark green to darken it so that it doesn't get too gray. For the inside here. And just going to finesse that shape a little bit. I want to see less of that inside oval, more of the outside, like a cuff here. Okay. <clears throat> Looking good. And I'm going to grab some more red. I think I'm going to sneak just a little bit of white in it just to get a slightly different tone of red. And get that all filled in with that base color as well. all around those shapes as carefully as I can. Covering the sketch lines. Trying to get pretty good coverage. Cute, looking good. Okay, and then our final boot we are going to actually fill in with white. I got a little drip there. Quick little mend with some gray from behind there and some red on top. Okay. 
quick mend. And then back to the white, making sure I don't have any red or any other colors on my brush. And I'm gonna try to find that shape now. It's gonna be pretty easy. So I'm just gonna grab some gray and bring that into the center. for that hollow part on the inside. Okay. Our stockings aren't full of treats yet because it's Christmas Eve. It's not Christmas Day yet. Okay, and some red here as well. Let's go ahead and do a lighter red even this time. Ooh, almost forgot my little white toe and heel. I think they look cute if they all have matching ones actually. But you can totally mix it up and get creative when it comes to these stockings though. And you could even write your family name on them. Or whatever you think looks cool. These are looking really cute. Very simple, but we're gonna add some fun little flourishes in just a minute. And just getting that all filled in with that slightly lighter red. It's not quite a pink. Okay, very nice. Okay, these colors and shapes filled in looking good. Now if you need to, you can come back on those other prior two and hit them up with a second layer of paint if you need to. Usually it doesn't have to quite be so careful. You can kind of just come in here with a bit more paint and just make everything more opaque. Acrylic paint doesn't even really need to dry 100% before you can hit it with another layer. If it's mostly dry, then usually you can still make things work as well. All right, we're gonna come up and add some holly berries now has like a little garland and I'm just going to create little red dots with my brush going from one of these little knob areas up to the top of the next one like we are decorating for Christmas right I think that just adds a nice little festive touch. And then maybe this one goes all the way off to the side here. Just like so. Super cute. And I think it would be logical to connect them really quick with just little gray in between lines. Sort of like the bricks. I'm not gonna get too detailed. I kind of want the sketchiness of it, a little bit of messiness, that feeling there. But I do want them to feel like they're connected. Okay. And I'm gonna grab some white. I'm gonna do a quick highlight on those berries just like a super tiny little curve line. And some nice little decorative touch. 
and just helps those show up a little bit more. How cute. All right, and we are on the home stretch here, folks. I feel like we're going long today, but there's a couple different elements in this painting. Hopefully we're still feeling good. Very cute, like it. All right, I'm gonna come back to my stockings. I have just bright red here. And I'm just making sure everything is as solid as I can get it. And I'm gonna add some polka dots now in a couple different places. All right, so let's add, now we get to get creative again. So I'm gonna grab, I think, light green first. And I'm gonna come into my first stocking and add some green polka dots. Super cute. All throughout doesn't necessarily have to be a pattern. And then I'm going to grab my smallest brush for some final little details. I'm going to do a quick outline of my whole shape here. There's that last little final part. I'm gonna bring a little bit of black here into the center of the stocking as well. About like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna outline the stocking shape as well. And that's not necessarily even a required step. Only if you want to. I think it looks cleaner and nice to outline things with black, but you definitely get more of that sort of illustrator, fun, less realistic look, which I like. Okay, and let's add some polka dots. I'm gonna grab my other second to smallest brush again. And I think I'm feeling like dark green polka dots on this guy. Same idea, sort of color coordinated family stockings today. I'd love to see your stockings and your creations and how you customize yours. And I do have a Facebook group called the Art Club and it's designed for my students to share their work so I can see it, I wanna see it. There's a link in the description box below to join that, I'd love to have you over there. And I find that this black outline step, perhaps it's a little bit of a lazy way to get some more details in, because I feel like that adds a lot when you can kind of find the sketch again from underneath here on top. And in these lighter colored ones, you can add a little curved brush stroke like so. And that adds a nice little final touch as well. Look at how cute we are looking. And the outlining step in addition is a good way to cover any sketch lines that might be there. right there. <laughs> okay, looking good. And I'm gonna do the outside of this stocking, but I think it needs a little bit more red. It has 
as well, but just gonna put the final touches on our final stocking. Very cute outside edge and then also the inside edge. We'll do a little swoop around there. Okay. And I'm just gonna grab my second to smallest brush again for one last coat here. Looking good. And then you can add whatever color polka dots you'd like to your red stocking, or you could add stripes or whatever you like. I think I'm gonna do a little sort of Scandinavian looking pattern. And I'm gonna do some stripes here at the bottom and then a little zigzag. And then I'm gonna do little hearts. And then I'm going to repeat that same pattern. Okay, so I have two stripes and a little zigzag. And then I'll do little hearts. Super cute everyone in our little imaginary family today has a slightly different stocking. All right, adorable. Okay, I think that is the end of today's instructions. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club as well. And until next time, happy holidays and stay creative.